Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us today. There's a few more that we're we're still expecting to join in, so I will buy us some time. But firstly, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that has jumped onto the call and is joining us today for our second ever um, get started with emergence workshop. So it's all about getting started with Web three and the emergence SDK. Don't worry, Alicia, I won't steal too many of your slides. Um, you. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we're we're super excited to have you all joining us and uh, appreciate your patience while we got everything sorted over in the uh, virtual green room, if you will. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this and uh, and to see you all learning about uh, about emergence and what it holds in store for us. So, Alicia, over to you. Great. Um, I guess we can start off with introducing ourselves. So um, I could go first. And then if you guys want to jump in, hi, I'm Alicia. Um, I'm head of product and technology. Um, I'll just be talking to you guys very briefly about what is emergence um, and showing you guys what we're guys and gals, what we're going to be going through today throughout this workshop. I'm super keen uh, to get more of you up and running with this so that anybody can start building really easily with Web3 in your virtual worlds and games. Thank you. I'm Alistair, uh, also known as Beard on the Block, head of community here. And yeah, excited to, to have all of our community members tuning in and, and joining us for this. Um, just a quick side note, if you are following along and you've got your MetaMask wallet set up and on the Polygon network, drop your address into the chat and we'll pop you some Matic so you can follow along live with us. Hello. Chris, over to you. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm going to be doing most of the um, Unreal teaching today. I guess all of the Unreal teaching today. Um, uh, the Unreal Dev for Emotions. Yeah. Yeah, Chris has been our lead uh, building out everything that you're going to be seeing today. Um, so if you have any questions, whether it's Unreal related or related to the Emergence SDK um, that we'll be showing today, um, Chris will be here to answer any questions. And we also have some members from the team who are also in the chat, who will be there as well to help answer any questions that people have throughout. So briefly, what we will be going through today is a quick introduction to what is the Emergence SDK? What is the SDK that we're gonna be showing that you all will be using for those who will be following along? Um, then Chris is gonna be diving into how to get started with Emergence in Unreal, showing um, how you can get your games and game worlds set up using the Emergence SDK um, in a matter of minutes. Uh, and we'll start off with just some of the initial features that exist with Emergence. Um, then we'll be diving into our sample project where we'll be showing some of the more advanced features that exist in the sample project answering any questions about some of these more advanced features so that you can then bring that into your project. Um, this workshop is going to be very 101 focused, but we're also happy to answer any questions that you have throughout it um, about the slew of features that exist within Emergence. Um, and by the end of this workshop, um, you will have a, a game world set up where you can interact with uh, the blockchain. Uh, we'll show how you can utilize functionalities uh, with being able for your users to connect their wallet um, to your game world, um, show how they can create and load in their personas. And by the end of this, you'll have your first interoperable avatar. Um, so again, what Chris and Alistair were saying, if you want to share your wallet address inside the chat here, we'll send you all over some Matic so that you don't have to pay for any gas fees. Uh, we'll be paying that for you as, so that you can mint your first inter interoperable avatar. Um, so just a very brief overview. Um, what is Emergence? Uh, Emergence is really the easy on-ramp for any game developer to build for Web3. 
what we are showing today is how to get up and running with the emergence uh, SDK for Unreal Engine. Uh, but we support both Unreal and Unity. We'll be doing future workshops that are Unity based as well. Uh, what we empower to game developers is the ability to have wallet authentication, to be able to interact with smart contracts, um, to be able to, have, we've built an avatar system so that your users can pick and choose their favorite avatar and have them um, load in uh, dynamically into your game world. And we also have what we call our own NFT inventory service so that your users can bring in their favorite assets from their wallet into your game world and for you as game developers to actually use them as game objects. And as well for you as game developers to be able to use assets that exist on chain um, and bring those game assets uh, into game worlds or transfer them to your users. Really think of like NFT objects as, as game objects. Uh, they could be collectibles, they could be items, they can be weapons, etc. cetera. Um, so we'll be showing you all these features today and showing you how to integrate this directly into your game. And just a few screenshots, um, everything that we're going to be showing you today, like the UI that pops up like automatically, everything that we provide to you as game developers is fully customizable so that you can update the UI and brand it for your specific game. Um, but for uh, what we provide with the Emergence SDK is base UI so that it's really easy for you to get everything integrated into your game. Um, this is just a quick little uh, video overview of what we'll be seeing after the first section of this workshop that Chris is going to be walking you through. In a matter of minutes, you'll be able to integrate Emergence so that then you can scan the QR code, connect your wallet, be able to create a persona, um, and then we'll be showing you how to mint your avatar so that you can actually load in avatars into your game world. So with that, Chris, I'm going to hand it over to you uh, getting started. And I think we'll start off by showing everyone where is our dev documentation so that you can, uh, uh, after this workshop, be able to go back to our developer documentation. We have full videos of everything that we're going to be showing today of how to get started yourselves. So let's say you want to like do this again or share this with other developers. We've got full documentation, tutorial videos, et cetera. And we'll show you all the links for how, how and where to download the Emergence SDK. So over to you. Yeah. Um, so let me start sharing the entire screen. So can you see? Yes. OK. So um, firstly, here is our uh, dev docs. Uh, they're at docs.emergence.site. Um, here you can find everything you need to know, um, a, basically a almost a written write-up of every single tutorial I've made as well. Um, there is everything for our Unreal um, version and our Unity version that is still in the works. But it's there are documentation for it, so you can uh, start looking at that if you really don't want to use Unreal. Uh, we've got a feature overview and uh, some talking about our EAS and stuff like that, which we'll get into, I guess. Um, you can get the plugin in two ways. You can get it from the um, Unreal Engine Marketplace. It's free. Uh, we support uh, 4.27 to 5.1 currently on the marketplace version. Uh, we also, you can get it through our GitHub. Um, so here we support uh, 4.26 as well if you're running that older version. Um, there's also two different versions here, but we don't really need to get into that. Um, there is a sample project here as well. So uh, first, let's show you how to get into Unreal. So I guess today we'll work with uh, 
I think that's what we wrote on the uh, thing. I hope we did. Um, but you can also use, you know, 4.26 or 4.27. So uh, what you want to do is uh, start 5.1. Oh, I should have. Hold on. Before we get to that, uh, just in case you your um, Epic Games Launcher hasn't done it for you, you'll want to make sure that um, Emergence has installed it to um, the engine. So if you scroll all the way down to your vault and search Emergence, you'll see there's a button that says Install to Engine. And you can select which engine version you want to install it to. I've already installed it to 5.1, so I can't see it, but you would do it there. Um, and yeah, now let's start 5.1. And so, just a note from um, our site as well, uh, the docs.emergence.site, there's a link to the GitHub directly there. Um, maybe, Chris, if you just want to show where that is, it's on the getting started section, getting started with Unreal. Uh, this one? Yep. Uh, exactly. This um, somewhere. There's a link at the at the top. Ah, uh, yes. Sample project link, yeah. Which yep. will take you uh, to this page, which will then take you to this page. Yeah. Um, you can, I'll put it in the chat as well if anybody wants it. Um, so, uh, now you've got Unreal open, uh, let's start with the third-person example project. So I'm going to select um, a Blueprint and C++ project. Um, but we do support the Blueprint project, but I find it's easier to like debug the C++ version. Um, so uh, yeah, let's create. This might take a while if anybody wants to fill. Um, so, we're first, firstly, I guess we'll show you um, how to open the overlay um, whenever it opens. Yeah, and we can, we'll show first also maybe what exists inside of the actual um, package. Um, so maybe we can show uh, some of the assets and what exists inside Emergence um, before we dive yeah. into using the first blueprint. I mean, whilst, whilst I wait for this to open, I'll show you it through the docs, because we've got, obviously, there's screenshots of all the blueprints in the docs. Um, so effectively, we have like we have this thing called the Emergent Singleton, um, which does like the majority of oh, it's opening, okay, um, which does like the majority of the things that Emergence does. But then we also have some other services like inventory service, avatar service, uh, things for directly interacting with smart contracts, blockchain interaction, so read uh, reading and writing to smart contracts getting a transaction status and the block number of the, um, the chain, uh, signing uh, messages using the wallet, working with um, key stores. So if you don't want to use Wallet Connect, then um, signing in with Wallet Connect and requesting things, uh, requesting to sign things with the Wallet Connected wallet. Uh, see how long this has got. Compiling shaders. Um, also, we got on here. Got some how tos. Is there anything else I should be talking about here? Um, just think, yeah, fill the time. <laughs> yeah, actually, I think this right here, because this is what we were going to show first inside the game engine. Let's dive into 
what we essentially provide as asset types and we can yeah. explain it. Um, this might be a good question also for the audience to know what is everyone's kind of level of knowledge with Web3? Feel free to comment inside the chat here. Um, we want to make sure that everyone is aware of what are some of the concepts we'll be diving into. So things like what a smart contract is, what an ABI is. But Chris, if you go back to that page, you were just on the asset types. I yeah. think this would be good to explain what these three core concepts are, blockchain, yeah. contract, and deployed contract. Yeah, so um, we uh, have basically added a new um, asset type that you'll find in your content browser in Unreal. Um, we've added three, actually. They are blockchains, contracts, and deployed contracts. So a blockchain is a blockchain. It's a, it's a, a, a decentralized, you can think of it as like a decentralized ledger of like transactions. Um, and then, an example of this, this would be like, if you want to, where the Ethereum blockchain, or do you want to build and connect to the Polygon blockchain? Um, I guess just to specify for everyone in the audience, we're full EVM compatible. Um, so maybe we could give some other examples, but basically that, that asset type um, that you just showed blockchain, um, this is where uh, Chris, you could dive into this, but this is what you'll set up to be able to interact with any EVM based blockchain. Yeah. So yeah, as you said, any EVM uh, blockchain, you just need the name, a RPC node URL, um, which is like the API you're calling to, to, to talk with the blockchain. Uh, obviously it needs to be an EVM compatible RPC um, URL. Um, the symbol, which is just used in the UI, and the chain ID, uh, which is used for some backend things, I think, for making sure the transactions can't be like replay attacked. Um, but just you can find all of this information um, on a website that I'm sure Agu will be able to um, post in the chat because I don't recall the name of it right now, but you can find all that information there. Um, or on the chain's website, they will usually tell you this information. Contracts are smart contracts. The idea here being that this is not an instance of a contract, but just the uh, just uh, like the a the effectively the API, but they're called ABIs for this. Uh, but the um, effectively the interface for the contract. So what you do here is you can find the ABI for a contract using a variety of tools like. Um, let's do, like here we've got the uh, a sample ERC-20, you know, on um, Etherscan, uh, which is like a, a, a transaction tracker for like the Ethereum blockchain. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you have this thing called the contract ABI and you just copy that and paste it into this box here and then press find methods and it will find all of the um, methods that you can interact with. So it doesn't really matter what type of smart contract you're trying to interact with. It will just find all of them for you. And then we have this thing called a deployed contract, which is a combination of a blockchain asset that I mentioned previously, a contract asset, which I mentioned previously, and an address, which is the address on the blockchain, which you would get from up here. Um, so, this is what you will feed into something like uh, our read method. Uh, wow, this is taking a while. Oh, it's nearly done. Okay. Um, this is what you would feed into your uh, read method um, node here, deployed contract. Um, and this will allow you to select which method you want to talk to with the method select field here. Uh, so we, we can kind of think. Um, we can kind of think of uh, a a contract as almost like a class, right? It's got methods that are tied to it, um, but it's really like a class that exists on the blockchain with all of the logic, correct? Yes. Yes. 
Great. So if you're like putting this together, I guess for the users who are here, you'd want to specify um, what blockchain are you interacting with? And then your smart contract is where you're going to have all your logic that's tied to it. So especially like, for example, um, if you've got a collection you're interacting with, um, there's a smart contract that exists behind that. Um, so it may have methods such as mint. Um, it may have methods related to like the metadata. Um, and those are essentially where you, with what we have with emergence with these types is the ability to say, here's the blockchain I wanna interact with and here's the smart contract. And then we do all this stuff in the back end for interacting for you. Yeah. So uh, now we're actually in the editor, finally. Um, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go to uh, Edit at the top, uh, Plugins, and then you'll want to search for Emergence, and you'll want to check this box on the uh, left of it here. And it'll just say that it's a beta version, and you want to press Yes. And then it's going to say you'll need to restart to change facts, so we're going to restart it. Hopefully it won't take this long this time because it'll have had all of the uh, things cooked. All of the textures. OK, there we go. So now you've got Emergence um, enabled. Um, so what we want to do is we want to be able to open the overlay. Um, now, the way you do that, we don't specify a, a specific key or way of opening the overlay or when your game should um, should open the overlay. We just say, we just give you the ability to choose whenever. Um, so I'm going to uh, put the code for this into to the third person character uh, blueprint. Um, you might want to put it somewhere else in your game or decide to do it in a different way. I'm going to just bind it to a key, uh, but I'll show you that now. So. Um, because I've made this a C++ class, it's decided to make this a data-only blueprint, so I'm going to just press open full blueprint editor at the top here. Um, and now we're going to bind it to a key to open it, so I'm going to just use Z, because it's probably one of the easier keys to find in this list. I say yes, it is here. Um, and when we do, uh, when Z is pressed, what we're going to want to do is we're going to Search for emergence, get emergence service, which brings up this little node here. And then we're going to drag off of that and do open emergence UI. We're going to plug that into pressed. And then we're going to plug uh, owner player controller into, um, let's do it into get player controller. Uh, this is fine because we're only going to ever have like one active player controller in this game, let's say. Um, and, and just to note, why are we setting the owner player controller here? Uh, because it needs a, um, the widget needs to know whose screen to draw to if this was a split screen game. Yep. Which I imagine nobody's ever going to make any split screen games ever at this point. Because they're all dead. Well, some people still like them, but yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. I like them, but maybe Web3 bring back split screen games? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Split screen okay. games is a blast from the past. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. It, it's there so that you have control over it, just in case people are wondering why am I specifying that inside? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, basically, this is just. It's just drawing to the screen. So um, here you want to set the emergence UI class to emergence UI underscore BP. Um, and then you want to press compile at the top left. And you should be able to go into game and uh, press Z, and you'll get your overlay. Um, and because it's the first time I've opened the overlay, um, it's giving me this uh, intro, your digital identity, and then I can just press space, and it's going to give me a QR code. So now I need to remember where I put my phone, because I didn't think this far ahead. Um, 
I'm happy to Unless, you want. Scan, please. Yeah. yeah, I've got a persona. Yeah, you've got a persona. So this works with a Wallet Connect, so it's going to be compatible with any um, any Wallet Connect enabled wallet. So you've got uh, MetaMask is probably the most popular one. Um, I think Coinbase Wallet has a scanner on it. Anybody, anybody in the chat use Coinbase? Thank you. So, can't say that I do use Coinbase. Yeah. So here is um, Alicia's persona. So, um, this, yeah, basically, this is, this is the screen where you get to choose your persona. Do you mind if I make you a new persona, Alicia? Yeah. Maybe before we create one, we could walk through what we also see like with the inventory and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So we also have the collection screen here. We, we have uh, two screens that don't do anything yet, but we have the collection screen here as well. Um, so this shows you your inventory. So, so everyone gets to see all my NFTs right now, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all of the, all your NFTs. I'm sure this is some that you've chosen to have and some which have just arrived, but they are all here. Um, but also so just so for the developers who are following along with that one blueprint that we provided, if any user connects their wallet, um, it's actually a really nice way for someone to be able to right away see everything that they own inside of their wallet, which is that one blueprint. Yeah. Um, and the other great thing about this is if you click on any of them, it's just going to show you um, any um, some some basic metadata, uh, some other data about it, like its last update um, on the on the to its metadata, and also its dynamic metadata attribute, which is our own special thing for allowing you to add extra data to any NFT. Uh, so most of these, obviously, any any of your NFTs are likely to have just blank dynamic metadata, but um, this one does actually have some. It has the number 54, um, which we can get into why that is later, I guess, because it's a bit complex. Yeah. Um, you can um, sort uh, by, or you can filter by category. So you can see just avatars if you turn off the other things. You can see just weapons. You can see just clothing. They do have to be tagged using our our, um, our metadata system uh, for them to show up like that. But it is possible. You can uh, choose from a, uh, which blockchain you want um, to only see. So this is currently showing all of them. But we support um, Ethereum, Polygon. Uh, Flow, Tezos, Solana, Immutable X, and Clayton. Um, currently, for this, for for the um, inventory system, which this makes use of. And we're going to be supporting more and more chains. We just announced our partnership with Lamina One last week, um, so we'll be integrating uh, more features specific to the Lamina One network as well. In case you are keen to build for that network. Yeah. And also there's a search bar at the top, which you can do like uh, emergence or, you know, heaps. Well, there's a lot of those. Yep. Um, so, so yeah, there, right now I have a persona, but if you want to show the users what they would see, because I've already got one built, but you could create one from scratch. Yeah, so um, when you sign in, um, you're going to be presented with just a big plus here because you've not got any personas. So you'll click on that, and you'll get to a screen that looks like this, apart from you probably won't have uh, this avatar here uh, as a choice. Um, so you're going to probably pick the default one. You're going to have to uh, until you get another um, avatar. And we'll get into how you can get a free one later, I think. Um, what do you want its name to be? Uh, uh, Laura. 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 <laughs> Bob okay. and Laura are quite different. <laughs> it was just going to be Jeff if I'd. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so you can set up name and bio and press um, create persona and it'll say, Are you sure? And then it will, 
you will now have two personas that automatically set that one active. Um, so that's the overlay. We can show actually now if you press the escape. Um, I know it loaded in, uh, or, or like I had my avatar there, but now if I now that I've got a new avatar, right? I've got my new avatar. This is going to by default use like the base mannequin, right? Yeah. So um, the VRM, the 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 avatar system isn't set up on this project yet. Yeah. Um, but it's worth mentioning that, um, for example, you you guys are probably wondering. We support Unreal and Unity. How how can the default one be the Unreal guy? Well, if you go into our Unity plugin version, then the default guy will be the Unity mannequin or the Unity robot, I think it's called, rather than the, the Unreal mannequin. And then obviously in 5.0, the Unreal mannequin is different. Um, I think there's actually a male and female one as well. Um, so the the effect effectively the um if the Unreal Mannequin is shown, it's effectively the game's default. So you can actually set it to be like your game's default avatar because you probably don't want to ship with the Unreal Mannequin. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have a system for allowing you to automatically update the entire UI to show that um, robot, rather, uh, that your game's av default avatar rather than Unreal's default avatar and the same for Unity. Yeah. And like you said, so this will work, um, like, let's say as a user, a user sets up a persona and maybe they set it up inside a game world that was built for Unity, um, that that user can still load in their persona and bring in their avatar into an Unreal world. Um, we, we support cross-engine, cross-chain, all that jazz. And for you as a user to get to where we just got it, got to, it's really that one blueprint node, um, the emergent singleton, right? Yeah. That that's all you need to do is bring in this one node. Um, so I guess before we move forward, feel free to add any questions. But this would probably be a good time to move over to our sample project, so that yes. we can see more of the examples of what we provide and know that everything inside the sample project you can use directly into your game world. Um, so really easy if you want to just copy paste the blueprints or just use the blueprints as reference, you can bring all of this sample code into your game world. Um, and we will show you how to um, mint your first avatar so that you can tie an avatar to your persona. Yeah, so um, as we said earlier, the sample project is available from our GitHub. I put the link in the chat. Uh, if you're watching back later and the VOD doesn't have the link, then it's Crucible Networks, LTD, Emergence SDK, Unreal, the releases, um, which you can find. The releases section is like on the right uh, down here. Um, you'll, uh, the, we have two versions here. We have local EVM and marketplace. Um, I won't get too into specifics here, but the Marketplace version uses a version of the plugin that's like the one on the Unreal Marketplace, and the local EVM version uses a, a separate program that sort of does what the Marketplace version does in the cloud, basically. You probably want, it's up to you which one you pick. Right now, I'm going to use the Marketplace version. Um, so, what you want to do is download that. Uh, extract it with your favorite zip extracting program. Um, and open it up. And hopefully, it's not going to take too long to build it. Uh, let's just close this so it gets a bit more speed. Um, this marketplace. Oh, well, this um, Unreal Sample project is built to work with, uh, or it's set up to work with 4.26, but it should uh, work on anything up to 5.1 currently. Uh, and we're looking at supporting 5.2. Um, if you just right click it and do switch Unreal Engine version. Um, and 
I know you're showing this on PC right now. Um, one of our big requests has been support for Mac, uh, which we are actively working on. So a Mac version will be released uh, shortly. Um, we're getting the Unity version out there and then expect an updated version for Mac. <laughs> yeah. Um, I yeah, I've been, that. I've been dying to test this out, but I'm on Mac, so <laughs> I'm I'm particularly looking forward to that. Yeah, um, I should have mentioned there when it uh, opened up, you might have saw the window that said this was built with a different um, Unreal Engine version. Do you want to rebuild these modules? Just press yes. You're not actually rebuilding the modules; you're only building them for the first time. It's just what Unreal says when you don't have built modules. Uh, so hopefully this won't take too long, but, um, shall I? We can maybe go back to the dev docs if you want to just yeah. show that we have a page that shows everything that's included in the sample project. So... Yeah. So, um, we have this little video, which I'll just, um, skip through. Um, blah, blah, blah. Also, if anybody wants the video for later, uh, here you go. Um, uh, yeah, so um, it has six little stations at it. Um, and so we've got th this one, which is opening the overlay, which just literally is a button that does exactly what I've just shown you how to do. Um, so I log in here, and then we have a thing about reading and writing smart contracts, which is using the system that I told you guys about earlier, uh, the read method node and the write method node. Um, this just works with a really simple um, contract that we set up as like an example contract um, on the Gorali chain. So if you've got any um, Gorali um, currency, I can't remember what it's called. Gorley, I guess. If you've got any of that, you can um, have a play around with that. And can you give an example of like why someone would want to read and write um, to a smart yeah. con? Yeah. So um, we uh, obviously sometimes you, a lot of the time you're just talking to like, uh, you just want to read like NFT data, but you can do that with the um, inventory. But if you want to write to the NFT, like you want to uh, call a mint function on the NFT, or you want to, um, you've got like a specific contract that has like extra things on it that, um, that are more interesting than mint, like you've got like, um, I don't know, you've got like these enchantable swords and you've actually got the enchantment built into the contracts and stuff like that, you can call those methods on them as well. Uh, you can set up marketplaces with this. So if you have a marketplace contract, you can do your reading and writing with this. So it kind of expands it to just more than reading from NFTs. You can actually write back to the um, to the blockchain with this system. So it's really like if you're interacting with any game object, right? You you read data that's tied to the game object, and you can write back to it. So maybe uh, you've interacted with something in your game and you want to make sure that interaction is saved to that object, you can write back to that. Yeah. And uh, then that means that, that that stays with it immutably on the blockchain record with that, that item. Is that right? Yeah. Awesome. I like so, it. Yeah. Great, isn't it? <laughs> um, so we've, uh, um, in this example video here, um, you'll notice that in a second, my avatar switches to match the 2D um, avatar that was in the overlay. And that's because in the sample project, which hopefully should open soon. Is it open yet? No. In, the, in this example project, you'll find that um, any uh, avatar that is associated with a persona will automatically be brought down from the blockchain and into the game world. And it will um, refresh your uh, player character model with the with that avatar. And oh, the plug this, this is included 
in um, the full emergent package that you've downloaded from the marketplace, correct? No, it's in the VRM extension package that you can get from our GitHub only. Okay. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah, yes. so you, the, to, to enable all of that stuff, you'll want to make sure to go to our GitHub and you'll find a thing. Um, it is in, I think it, it's definitely in the, it's definitely in the sample project stuff. So what I would yeah. recommend is download the sample project, go into the plugins folder and copy and paste them into the plugins folder of your project. If you want to work with VRMs. Yeah. And all of this is in our, um, on our docs. So the same page we provided docs.emergence.site of exactly where to get the plugin and how to integrate it into your game world. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the reading and writing examples, just uh, increasing, uh, incrementing a number on the blockchain. It's a super simple contract. Uh, to the right of that, we have this um, emergence avatars um, thing, which allows you to mint. And this particular avatar that we're looking at, um, and that will actually allow you to use it with your um, in the persona screen and set it as your persona. And then you'll be able to load it in game and bring it down from the blockchain, like I just mentioned. I'll show you that show you that in a second once everything is loaded up. Um, the right of that we have this other node, which is uh, this sorry this other button called inventory service, and this is you'll notice at the bottom of the screen here we have some NFTs, and this is a super super basic example of how you can put the uh, output of the inventory service into your game's UI specifically rather than having to use our overlay. Because I'm sure a lot of you game developers are probably looking at our overlay and going, I'd rather use, I'd rather make my own uh, that fits more with the theme of my game, or maybe I don't want to show everything, or I only want to show things from a particular blockchain or a particular collection. This sort of gives you the framework of how you can put something like that together. Um, and then finally, we have the dynamic metadata button. And what this does is it gives you um, a super basic example of how you can use dynamic metadata. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is our system for allowing you to write arbitrary data to any NFT for just, let's say you allow you're allowing people to bring any NFT into your game and you're like, oh, I want to put some data on it, but their NFT doesn't have that data available or you don't have access to write that data. You can sort of just write it and it sort of deals with it for you. You don't have to like think about like where you're going to store that data. Um, additionally, it also shows off our NFT picker, which is kind of like the, if you imagine in Windows, you you click open in Word and you open a file. This is, allows you to, with one node, open the inventory and then bind to when the player selects a particular NFT. And when they select a particular NFT, you will get the data about that NFT back. And what I do with that data is I use it to write some dynamic metadata to it. Dynamic metadata to it. Um, but yeah, that's, the, that's everything that's in the sample project. So, um, it has now loaded up, which is great. Um, so this is in uh, 4.26. Uh, my slide time. There we go. Um, so, so we can show everyone, um, especially for those uh, who haven't minted an avatar yet, maybe how they can do that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, I'd love to do that, but I don't have an account that doesn't have one. Uh, I, we can make a second one, right? I could, I could, you could. I, I'd need to find my phone, but you could. I could. Okay, let's do it. So uh, let's steps, because first I got to connect my wallet, right, through the overlay. Yes. Um, are you do, you're doing this with a new account, right? You've got a blank account, right? Uh, not with Matic in it. Ah. But I it's the same one, right? Just make a new persona and mint. Um, yes, although you the the thing's already on your account, so you can use it with any persona. Okay. We, we can show the minting process anyway. You just wouldn't see any difference. Yeah. We, yeah. Shall we? Yeah. If you want to log in. 
Yeah, let's uh, not be in Unreal. Let's be inside the sample, inside the world. Uh, what? What? Uh, sorry, as in full screen, just so everyone can oh, see. Oh, right, yeah. Hold on. Uh, let's... There we go. So this would be what you want to do, right? Run up to the overlay um, station first? Um, yeah, well, in the, in, in the sample project, you can actually still use Z. Um, okay. Cool. As well. well. I'm gonna scan my wallet here. Connect my MetaMask. But you could you could of course use the button to um I've connected my uh -huh. Okay. So now um what we're gonna do is it's gonna load personas. Um uh, keep in mind by the way, anybody who's trying this at home. Uh, the overlay tells says escape at the top left. If you press escape, remember that in Unreal, if you press escape whilst playing in editor, it will stop. So you need to press shift escape. But in your actual game, that won't matter, of, of course. Um, yeah. Or if you, if you don't want to worry about pressing shift escape, you can always click on escape, and that will also do it. Um, but yeah, this is the emergence avatars example. Yep. Um, you'll need to make sure that your wallet is set to Polygon uh, manually, because in this version of Unreal, of, sorry, in this version of Emergence, we don't support um, switch, switching networks, uh, but we've fixed that in the next version. So yep. if I press E to interact with this, um, hopefully Alicia will get a Yes, yeah, I'm showing. I just got a message that popped up because you pressed E, so it's saying... Uh, would I like to confirm to mint this avatar? Do I have enough for gas fees? Yes, I do. So confirm. Um, and hopefully it will come through. Great. Transaction. Wallet, so if you see there, uh, wallet connected, wallet confirmed. Yeah. And I got uh, a con in here as well on my wallet. Now, if we go into back into the editor for just a second, you'll see at the bottom in the output log, it's doing what what we do automatically on a write method, which is any method that requires there to be a transaction. Read methods are like instant um, and don't really make transactions, whereas write methods cause a transaction to happen. So anytime that there is a transaction, what Emergence will automatically do for you as um, the game developer is it's going to pull the um, every um, set amount of time which you can set currently I think it's five seconds every five seconds it's going to pull the blockchain for the confirmations and that's going to make sure that like in in your game you know that that transaction has not only gone through to the blockchain but the that enough of the blockchain has stacked on top of that, enough blocks have been stacked on top of that, that it's not going to become undone by someone else like mining blocks faster or, or on a different chain, if that makes sense. It's, it, uh, or it's not on a different chain, but on a different um, node. I, I, this would make sense to you if you, you know, if you, once you get really into Web3, this is the sort of thing you need to concern yourself with because you don't want to have like, your transaction become undone and then you've accidentally you wasted that gas. <laughs> well, not wasted the gas, but like your game state is now no longer in sync with the game and you've accidentally given someone like a free item or something like that. Um, so after it's after we've had two or three confirmations and you can set that as well, um, you an event will fire and uh, you'll get a transaction hash back. And now we have minted that thing. And, and we could even take that transaction hash here. And we can go to uh, here, Gorali Etherscan. And we can put it in. And it's uh, maybe somewhere. The whole thing. It will be there. Bad example. <laughs> I put it in right. Ah, oh, I think we will find it. 
it's all um, good. We can share the we can share the link to Etherscan afterwards. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually really fascinating seeing people's wallet addresses, transaction IDs, and like, there's a it's a, a whole rabbit hole that you can go down and not even scratch the surface. Yeah. Um, but if you jump into our Discord, you can always pester Lemon K Juice or myself um, for more information around the the Web three blockchain side of things. Yeah, and the main you know I think for all of you as users and developers is that if we go back to that beginning bit that Chris was explaining, where you set up a blockchain, you set up a smart contract, we've got that automatic drop down where you can see all the methods to interact. Yeah, I can, I can um, share that in a sec if we want. For you as a developer, it's really about just choosing these things, and we're automating all of this in the back end. Um, that write method also gives you back um, the the status codes and everything. So when Chris was saying you want to wait for a few like confirmations, all of this is automated in this simple to use blueprint. Um, so we're just showing you a little bit of like how we're just proving that this actually did write back to the blockchain through Etherscan. Um, but all of this for you as a developer is really abstracted to like very easy to use blueprints. Um. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. But so now you've you've minted that. What you should get now when you open your overlay is if you go to your persona, which will probably look more like this. Uh, you can go to replace avatar, and you'll get this new one, which is called Hair Sample Female by Majin, um, which is um, a, a CC uh, Creative Commons zero. Um, VRM that we we've uh, got from the uh, effectively the VRM consortium. Um, so now you can press replace avatar, press save changes, and it will say updating your persona. And when your persona updates, you'll notice in the log down at the bottom that we start making calls out to IPFS, and that's to actually download this VRM from the blockchain. So you'll see it said loading avatar in the top left. And um, wow, that was fast. I was nice. I was I was stalling because I thought it was going to take longer. But um, it um, basically downloads it from downloads it from the blockchain and asynchronously loads it in. And we have a whole tutorial on how to do this, how to set this bit up. It's not quite as simple as something that we want to tackle today, I don't think, but. Um, we do have like a video tutorial and a written tutorial if you prefer that as well on how to do that. Yeah. So I know we've got just three minutes left for this one hour. And as we said, we really wanted to do a 101 of really how to use the Emergent Singleton, that one blueprint that will allow your users to scan their QR, uh, scan the QR code, connect their wallet. They get to see what exists in their wallet. Um, we've shown how through this sample project, um, let's say you're new to this and you're like, I want to get like a free, uh, my first interoperable avatar. Uh, you can come into this sample project, share this with any of your users as well so that they can mint their own avatar and then tie it to their persona. Um, this now means that your persona can be loaded into any game world. Um, and uh, the user can bring their favorite avatar with them into their game world. Um, and so for future uh, workshops, we're going to be diving into more of the intermediate side, diving into more specific use cases of how to read and write back to any smart contract, how to use our inventory service. But for now, um, if you're keen to dive in yourself, as Chris was saying, um, definitely recommend checking out our docs, docs.emergence.site. And inside this sample project, we have full samples uh, showing how to read write to your own smart contracts um, and full video walkthroughs as, as well. So, Chris, Alistair, maybe anything you'd like to dive into before we open it up for questions? Uh, um. Yeah, a question from Meta Mike, so maybe we can answer that in parallel. I was going to suggest that we 
And I went to Meta Mike's question. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, I have also seen a hand raised from Franco. So Meta Mike, I think you were first. Let's cover this. What is the name of the metadata parameter for the VRM storage? Uh, what do you mean? What is the name? Uh, oh, ah, are you right? Okay, yeah. Um, so if you're talking about how we load VRMs from blockchain, we found that the majority of um, the majority of on the, the ones we found, at least, we couldn't find a set on place that people would put it. Sometimes they put it in the content, which is great. Um, and this is actually, it's actually how this one works. Um, but the way that we got around the fact that people tend to either put it in the content, put it in another um, parameter, or put it in um, a hidden thing behind like a, like a login verify thing, is we built this thing called the EAS system. And what that does is it's basically a second smart contract that is just a effectively a lookup table where you put in the um, contract and token, and it returns an IPFS URL which contains additional metadata about that avatar. This is getting like super, like a lot more technical than I thought we were going to get. But yeah, just put the link actually to um, what describes how the EAS system works and how to get it set up for either your NFTs or your collections. Um, so, as you were saying, it's kind of technical, but this is all covered inside this one page here. Yeah, what's worth the thing? So, in emergence, you don't need to worry about any of that. It comes out through uh, avatar by owner and avatar by ID, which we have a load of tutorials on how to use. If you're wondering whether your VRMs that are already on the blockchain will work just out of the gate, you will need to register them with EAS first for them to show up. But it's yeah. really simple. We have a tutorial on that too. Yeah. And also for future, um, uh, MetaMic, and relevant to what Chris was saying, since there aren't standards, right, that exist with how people are setting up their metadata today, that's one of the reasons we can't just just say, uh, oh, hey, everything's stored inside this specific metadata, right? There is no standard for uh, IPF mo IPFS model link. Um, so that in part is why we've built the EAS system. We're actively working with some collections to have um, their collections automatically registered. So let's say you own it, that would just show up right away. Um, but we are also working, Agu, who is in the chat, um, also shout out Agu. Agu is our very, very amazing Web3 architect. Um, feel free to reach out to him for any questions. But what we are working on as well is a custom indexer. Um, and I might not dive into all the technical details of exactly what that means. But in part, one of the challenges we're trying to solve is that there are so many collections out there. Some people have their stuff stored on IPFS in a certain way. Some people are using different storage solutions for it. Some have 3D avatar collections without their um, storage actually exposed. So um, we've built our own indexer um, and we'll be launching soon to get all that information from key collections and key blockchains that are out there so that then we can go through this. Um, and to be honest, we've been very big fans of uh, GPT-4 <laughs> uh, on our team. That's probably a whole workshop in itself, but we're gonna be using that data so that we can infer where that information is stored um, and automate a lot of the back end for a lot of the users so that we can have it automatically set up for many of the collections that are out there um, and have that information about where their models are stored. But again, to what Chris is saying, that doesn't mean like, ooh, I want to use like all the avatars are, that are out there. 
um, we still need to do a check uh, or we do that check to see like, do you actually own this? Does this exist in your wallet? If yes, then we'll have that information about where the models are stored for at least the collections who have exposed um, the information. Uh, I, I'd, I'd also say like, if you put it in the content, it's probably more likely to be picked up by our indexer when we get round to it than if you put it in some weird place. That's all. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. Franco, you have very politely raised your hand, so I'm going to invite you up to the main stage. The floor is yours. Maybe not. If I can add you as a speaker. All right, well, there, there was a raised hand. If in the interim we have any more questions. Ah, Ratana, you made it. Thanks for thanks for joining us. Um, we'll just see if Franco comes back with their question. Um, give it a few more minutes. If anyone else has any more questions, then please pop them in the chat or raise your hand. You can do that via um, clicking on the right-hand side where it says people. You can um, raise your hand to request to speak over there. Um, otherwise, we'll just see if Franco comes back. I think they may have been disconnected, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> I could just share some quick information as well with the community while we potentially wait. Just um, perfect. Sounds yeah. good. So, um, for context, like we're showing um, uh, emergence in Unreal today. Uh, as Chris showed, we are up on the Unreal Marketplace. Um, we've gotten some really great traction from the developer community uh, since we launched on March first of this year. We have over 30,000 downloads um, from the Unreal developer community. So it's been really great seeing the traction there. Um, that we are an official Unity verified solutions partner. So our version of Unity for this right now is in the pipe with Unity. Um, Unity has been great with really diving into doing very extensive testing with this. Um, so we are re hoping that uh, Tom, who is not here today, Tom, shout out to you if you get to see this recording, um, will be hopefully getting the last bit of minor fixes in early next week. Um, so expect the Unity launch to be going live very soon. Um, uh, I believe it's already been shared here, but we could do it again, uh, putting the link to the Discord in here. Uh, some of you who are on this call have been actively sharing your games and experiences um, and how you've been using Emergence. We'd love to see more use cases. Um, there's been some great examples of how people are building Web3 games. So even if you're new to the world of Web3, I'd recommend uh, diving over to our Discord to see how people are using Emergence and how they're building for Web3. There's a really great game that's out there where it's kind of like an FPS chicken chicken shooter game type of thing, but it's really fun to see how they're integrating users' wallets into there. Um, and another really amazing game where a uh, picture, picture kind of like a, a card game uh, type of game. Um, what's the game I'm thinking of? Is it Hearthstone? Could be, yeah. Uh, it reminds me a lot of like a Hearthstone, but that's integrating uh, NFT cards uh, and how to like award things to your users and how to read right back to the NFTs. So lots of really amazing games that people are sharing in the in the community. So highly recommend you to do the same or check out some of the games that are out there. So Franco, I see you joined the stage. Hey, Franco, you had your hand raised previously, so uh, we wanted to invite you up here to hear your, your question, comments, or, or feedback.
think oh. Franco might have connection issues because they've come come in and out of uh, in and out a couple of times during this. So I think with that, if there are any more questions, then please uh, join our Discord. The, the link is in the chat here. Uh, please join our Discord and feel free to ask any questions in there. If you need any help or guidance at all with your emergence project, then once again, jump into our Discord and we can help you in there. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash open metadow. And please join me in raising a virtual round of applause for Alicia and Chris, who have very kindly put on this workshop for you. So Alicia, Chris, thank you so much. Thank you, Alistair. Thanks. Thanks everyone for joining. Well, thank you. Awesome. And, and this recording will be available. So if you didn't manage to catch all of it, or you want to share it with your friends and family, then on this very same link, you will be able to download um, the recording of this workshop. Cool. Thank you so much.